Good morning. Uh, it's a real privilege to be with you today to mark Yom HaShoah. My name is Rob Thompson. I'm from the Council of Christians and Jews, CCJ, and I work there as a senior program manager. I'm going to be leading um, the session this morning on Christian Jewish relations in the aftermath of the Shoah. I'm going to begin by sharing a little bit of CCJ history, um, firstly, and talk about some of the ways in which Christian and Christians and Jews came together in the UK to promote interfaith relations as a response to what they were learning about the Holocaust. And I'm also delighted to be joined by two church leaders who have travelled with me to Yad Vashem on CCJ's annual Yad Vashem seminar for Christian clergy. I'll introduce uh, Jackie and Megan a little later, and they're going to share their experience of, as Christians, of learning about the Holocaust and educating their Christian communities about what they have learned. But before I do so, I'm going to begin with some reflection on Christian Jewish relations in the aftermath of the Holocaust. In 2020, I'm delighted to say that interfaith is a trusted and important part of community life. There are numerous wonderful organisations in the UK doing extraordinary work to break down barriers between communities and to promote good relations between people of faith. CCJ is one of those, which the Council of Christians and Jews is actually the oldest of those organisations being the first national interfaith body formed in the UK. CCJ was founded in 1942 by a group of lay and ordained Jews and Christians. And the leaders of this new interfaith movement were the then Archbishop of Canterbury, William Temple, and the then Chief Rabbi, Joseph Hertz. And the founding statement of CCJ was printed in the Times newspaper on the 1st of October 1942. And I'd like to quote uh, from that statement. It's quite a lengthy quote, so bear with me, but I think it's important. So I quote, the present German government has consistently attempted to undermine and destroy those traditional religious and spiritual values of mankind in which it recognises its most dangerous enemies. The course of the war has seen a steady intensification of these attempts, and German conquests have enormously extended the area in which these policies can be ruthlessly applied. In the forefront of these efforts to create division within every community, the Nazis have always placed anti-Semitism which is repugnant to the moral principles common to Christianity and Judaism alike. We cannot afford to ignore the effects of the steady propagation of this evil throughout the world. It is not only a menace to the unity of every community in which it takes its root, but it is the very negation of those values on which alone we believe that a new and better world can be established. So we can see how the context of the Second World War was hugely important in identifying the need for an organisation which promoted Jewish-Christian relations. And alongside that context, we can see how the issue of anti-Semitism was a powerful force in motivating Jews and Christians in the UK to establish CCJ. From the very beginning, CCJ was committed to addressing rising anti-Semitism. They perceived it as a barrier to good community relations in the UK. But even more importantly, they recognised the destruction it was causing in occupied Europe and the way in which the better post-war world, which all free peoples dreamed of, would be forever flawed if anti-Semitism was allowed to continue to increase unchecked. So the Nazi persecution of the Jews was a powerful factor in moving some Christians and Jews in the UK to pursue better relations and ultimately to create CCJ. 
Indeed, alongside Jewish organisations and campaigners, Christian figures involved in CCJ from its beginning recognise the importance of raising awareness of the increasing evidence of the Nazi persecution and destruction of European Jewry. The Reverend James Parks was one important figure, both in the founding of CCJ and in raising awareness of the Holocaust, and also in helping Jewish refugees from Nazism. Parks was a Church of England priest, under whose pear tree in his vicarage garden in Barley in Cambridgeshire, the first conversations were held, which helped led to the founding of CCJ. During the 1930s, Parks quietly, modestly and bravely helped Jewish refugees flee Europe and settle in the UK. They included the Tyke family, Emmanuel Wiener and Rabbi Eschelbacher from Dusseldorf. There were most likely more than these names, but Parks destroyed many of his papers during the war for fear that in the event of a German invasion, it would put his Jewish friends' lives at risk. During the war, Parks wrote articles raising awareness of the Holocaust and calling for greater help for the Jews of Europe. He wrote in 1943, for example, the question which today outtops all others is that of rescuing as many of the victims of the Nazi policy of extermination. It is difficult to remember that each day in Eastern Europe, several thousand men, women and children are being killed in cold blood. Nearly two million are already dead and there has been no action which shows a sense of urgency or a recognition of the immensity of the catastrophe which is falling, befalling the Jewish people. At the same time, Parks's friend, Archbishop William Temple, another key figure in the early days of CCJ, was also raising awareness of the Holocaust amongst the British public. Temple joined a CCJ delegation in meeting with the Foreign Office in December 1942, two months after CCJ's founding, to call for an official government acknowledgement of the Nazis' crimes and to lobby for a change in British policy towards Jewish refugees. At CCJ's request, Temple wrote to the Prime Minister, Winston Churchill, stating that, or we, and I quote, we feel that some immediate action should be taken to do what is possible, however little that is. Temple stressed the urgency of the matter to the Prime Minister. Our chief anxiety is the time factor. Jews are massacred daily. But the government did nothing. Finally, Temple famously used a debate in the House of Lords in March 1943 to share the evidence of the Nazis' murder of Jews in Europe and to implore the British government to accept more Jewish refugees. For William Temple, raising awareness of what would become known as the Holocaust was a moral imperative. He believed that during the war, lives could be saved if governments acted on the evidence they were being shown. And he was one of the first Christian figures to publicly recognize the Holocaust as a Jewish tragedy, which had consequences for all of us, using Christian imagery, such as the Good Samaritan, to seek to persuade his fellow parliamentarians. His words in the House of Lords in March 1943 were powerful ones. He said, and I quote, we at this moment have upon us a tremendous responsibility. We stand at the bar of history, of humanity and of God. Though Archbishop Temple may not have succeeded in persuading the government to act to save life, Jewish lives during the war, his words, I think, stand the test of time as a powerful indication of how a small group of courageous Christians and Jews came together at the height of the Holocaust to raise awareness and to demand a response. Today, inspired by the work of Archbishop Temple and James Parks and others, CCJ continues to raise awareness of the Holocaust. Our annual seminar at Yad Vashem has been running since 2007 
and we are unique in the whole of Europe in enabling this opportunity for Christian church leaders and clergy to study the Holocaust at Yad Vashem. When we study at Yad Vashem, we are encouraged to remember the six million Jews who were murdered in the Holocaust, and not just to remember their deaths, but also to learn about the culturally rich and diverse and creative life of the Jewish communities of Europe before the Shoah. In doing so, we are creating a network of Christian church leaders who are committed to remembering the Holocaust and to promote meaningful relations between Christians and Jews today. And to hear more about the experience of studying at Yad Vashem uh, and to what we can do with our knowledge, I now want to hand over to two of those church leaders who have traveled with CCJ to Yad Vashem and who are now educating their communities. I'm really pleased um, to introduce Jackie Holderness, who is Education Officer at Christchurch Anglican Cathedral in Oxford, and Megan Cox, Youth Development Worker in the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Birmingham. Jackie and Megan are now going to share their stories of engaging with Shoah history at Yad Vashem, their motivations for doing so, and the creative ways in which they have been remembering the Holocaust in their particular context. So we'll start with you, Jackie. Thank you, Rob. Um, it's a great privilege to be part of this year's uh, Yom HaShoah commem commemoration. And um, this is the date, um, April the 15th, April uh, 1945, when the rumours of unimaginable cruelty and horror were verified and revealed and captured on film by the uh, army going into Bergen-Belsen. Uh, my own first experience of the show was very much shaped by the heart-wrenching images uh, in history books. Um, but then when I was 11 or so only, I met a camp survivor, one of my mother's uh, friends, who showed me her prison identification tattoo. And I could almost sense her pain as she guided my fingers to trace the numbers on her inner arm. And I still think of her a model of dignity and resilience. And since meeting her all those years ago, I've been blessed with many Jewish friends. And um, in 2013, I was able to go to Israel as a Christian pilgrim. And that visit was a journey of profound discovery. Um, being in the land of Abraham, patriarch of three major religions, helped me to deepen my lifelong interest in the common history and humanity of those religions rather than their differences. Um, I believe very strongly that teachers and schools need to help their students explore the problems of dan and dangers of prejudice and bigotry. Um, rather, they need to learn about the Shoah. Yes, the outcomes are beyond comprehension, but the great faith, heroism and compassion that they inspired um, should be you know, taught in all schools. I think Primo Levi, Elie Wiesel, uh, should be set texts for students around the world, Corrie ten Boom as well. Um, my first HMD event um, was at the cathedral for teachers to learn more about what resources are available. And there are many valuable resources um, available from Yad Vashem itself online. And although I had visited Jerusalem briefly, I had not been able to go to Yad Vashem. The generosity of the leaders um, and educators of the, pro of the program in November um, 2008 17 enabled me to join a CCJ group with, uh, it was an ecumenical group with uh, Catholics, Methodists, Pentecostals and Anglican uh, leaders and together with inspirational lecturers and teachers, witnesses and survivors, um, we were journeyed into the history of the Jewish people and Jewish life in Europe before evil and prejudice led to their dehumanization, their persecution and attempted elimination. The survivors we met had been children whose childhoods and families had been destroyed by harrowing and indescribable events. And through their moving testimonies of great bravery and endurance, um, we learned that survival does not come um, without cost. It leaves its scars. Um, at Yad Vashem, we learned vital lessons from these stories, whether they were the stories of victims or survivors, even bystanders and perpetrators. And during the intensive program of lectures and seminars, we were always encouraged to relate 
what we were discovering to ourselves and to our own societies. As Christians, we knew that many bystanders and perpetrators professed to have Christian backgrounds and beliefs, though they said they were followers of Jesus, um, who of course was a Jew himself, they had been guilty of anti-Semitism. And one photograph that made our group painfully uncomfortable showed Jewish men being held in a, a church hall before they were deported to the camps. And seeing a cross on that wall was particularly challenging. We were encouraged to consider identity. The Jews were dis disenfranchised and robbed of their rights and even their names. As we explored our own identities and our own responses to what we were encountering, we were encouraged to ask ourselves, what would I do? How would I react? What would Jesus have done? And naturally, with so many theologians present, we discussed many times the role of God in the Shoah, the same God that Jesus shared. I am reminded, however, of what Etty Hilversum wrote in 1942 before her deportation. She wrote that all that really matters is that we safeguard that little piece of God that lies within each one of us and in others as well. She went on to say that we must defend God's dwelling place inside us to the last. And at Yad Vashem, we encountered many tales of victims going to their deaths in the gas chambers with prayers on their lips or singing psalms still upheld by their faith in a greater good. One important lesson that Yad Vashem taught me and that has stayed with me since is the power of memory and story. Yad Vashem very consciously sets out to capture the stories of oppression and betrayal, courage, suffering, charity and sacrifice. It's ensured that the memories of ordinary and extraordinary people um, are captured wherever they were, were living at the time. In Warsaw, Emmanuel Ringenblum and others in the Jewish community recognized the importance of narrating the current moment and sensing their time was limited they wrote and painted their experiences and ideas so that the stories would, would survive for those who would follow, secretly gathered and buried underground inside milk churns. 35,000 texts were retrieved from the ashes of war and they now bear witness to the stoicism of so many in that ghetto. Since my return from Yad Vashem, I've been organizing two more Holocaust Memorial Days at the cathedral, and these have been worthwhile on many levels. I've been struck at how, other, how others have benefited from being given time and space to come to terms with the Shoah and its lessons for today's world. Participants have fed back to me about the impact of the days and how they have helped them to learn so much that they had either not known before or had never clearly understood. And while planning the content for each Holocaust Memorial Day, I think it's important that to have aimed for a healthy balance between feeding curiosity while remaining authentically sensitive to the events being commemorated. We always start the day uh, with a visit to our local synagogue in Oxford and our Jewish centre to learn more about last year, the history of the Jewish community in England from medieval times to the present day. We always participate in the Lord Mayor's ecumenical service at our local town hall, which brings together politicians, councillors and religious leaders from many faiths. We have a keynote lecture, usually about research. Like this year, it was Paul Windling who had researched the kinder of the kinder transport. And then we always finish with a small, a short reflective ecumenical service inside the cathedral. We have a stained glass window showing Jesus with a menorah, which seems very suitable. And each person is invited to come and light a candle in a simple ceremony that seems to restore the faith that we need as human beings to be able to care genuinely for all humanity and to be gentle with those who may have in their flawed natures have been guilty of the most unimaginable, unimaginable transgressions or have been guilty merely of indifference. A very positive development that has come out of this uh, these days is that the chapter of Christchurch has decided to commemorate 
Holocaust Memorial Day with a fuller service and liturgy in the hope that even more members of our college and cathedral communities will participate and come to a deeper understanding of the Shoah and why it is vital that we continue to resist any form of prejudice and racism. And I would like to thank CCJ for the opportunities that it has given me. Thank you. Yeah, good morning, everybody. And just to echo something that both Rob and Jackie have both said, it's a real privilege to be able to speak to you this morning and share a little more of the work that I've been doing um, within my role with the Catholic Church uh, in and around Birmingham. So I mostly work with 11 to 25 year olds, young people, um, a great privilege, but also a great responsibility to be able to share what I know with um, a younger audience, be able to shape and help to form their ideas and understanding of Holocaust Memorial from a younger age in the hope that they will again go forward and share what they know um, with the people that they meet. So just to speak a little bit about my experience of Yad Vashem and where my initial interest in learning more about Holocaust Memorial came from. When I was 14 our school took us on a trip to Auschwitz in Poland for um, four days as a history trip um, to go and see where these events took place um, within Auschwitz. And it was a really profound experience, but very much um, quite factual. We were there as history students. What happened to who? This is where it happened. But something which I have always really personally wanted to know more about is to whom this happened, the people, the culture of the people the individuals, the stories of the individuals, what happened to these individual people. And that's something which um, studying at Yad Vashem really enabled me to be able to do. Some of the key lessons which I learned and had the privilege to learn more about um, was the importance of testimony. I'm in a really fortunate position to be able to hear still first-hand testimony of people who were children during the Holocaust who have first-hand memories of what happened. And it's my responsibility, still as a young person myself, to listen to these stories, to remember them, and to pass them on to those who I meet through my work. I also, as part of my time of study um, at Yad Vashem, really learned the importance of well-informed memorial. Coming from a Catholic background, um, obviously, there is a, a different spin on this when we're looking at what it means to be um, a Catholic and what it means as a Catholic to remember the events of the Holocaust. And of course, we have a responsibility and it's something that I have definitely witnessed in schools. For example, this year for Holocaust Memorial Day, I was in a secondary school in South Birmingham speaking to around 1200 students under the theme of Promise Keeper, um, looking at what it means for us as this generation to remember the events that happened during the Shoah. And I think it's important for me when speaking to young people to be honest and open and also to be well informed myself about, as Jackie was saying, the role of Christians during wartime. To speak with young people about the church that they are a part of today, looking very different to how it will have done back in the 40s. Um, we had the Second Vatican Council during 1965, which changed a lot of our beliefs, our decrees. They changed our way of viewing of how we speak about, how we view, how we talk about other faiths drastically changed. And I think that for my generation, particularly, we'll, we'll never have known um, a church any different to the one after Vatican II. But actually, when we're talking about memorial, when we're talking about well-informed memorial, it's so important for young people to understand the context of the church um, at the time of the Holocaust. This is how we're really going to hit that, that key lesson that I learned, the importance of well-informed memorial that I learned at Yad Vashem. So my work once returning from um, Israel was great. I had a lot of time to share with my colleagues the things that I'd learned whilst being in Israel. Being able to speak with people from other Christian churches um, during my experience there um, really gave me a more rounded idea of what it means to remember 
the events of the Holocaust within our Christian tradition, to honour those lives of those people, the people who were lost during these events, but also the culture that was attacked. Something that I know um, stuck with me from Yad Vashem was learning about the traditions of um, pre-war um, Jewish communities across Europe, learning about different communities that existed, different cultures, different ways of doing things, such a richness that I've never been given the opportunity to look at and understand before. And I think that uh, that really helps to spark my interest and want to know more um, about this going forward as I continue my studies looking at um, Holocaust Memorial within this Catholic setting. So I just want to say uh, to close, it was a real, as I said at the beginning, privilege to study at Yad Vashem and I hope that this is just the start of um, a whole range of studies that I can now embark upon um, from this trip. Thank you, Megan and Jackie. Thank you, everyone, um, for joining us for this session. It's been a privilege to share our reflections on the ways in which Christians and Jews have responded together uh, to their knowledge of the Holocaust. And one final thought, very quickly. Um, those words of William Temple in March 1943, we stand at the bar of history, humanity and God. Three reasons um, to remember the Holocaust and to continue to share that learning and that memorialization uh, with people uh, in our communities today for the sake of history, for humanity and for God. Thank you.